Hi. I know I said I wasn't going to make videos for a while because I'm studying for a test, but it's not as intense as I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to continue to make my videos. <laughs> but I just I wanted to talk more about anxious attachment style or personality, clingy, needy attachment style or personality, tomato, tomato. It's behaviors that we do. And I just started having the most random thoughts today. So I just kind of wanted to share more of that with you. And again, you can agree, disagree. I hope some of the things I'm about to say are going to make sense. And some of the things might sound harsh. But again, I don't sugarcoat things on here because it doesn't really do any of us any good. We need to get to the root of the problem. and We need to acknowledge things that we're doing. Because love is going to mean something different to everybody. Everybody's going to describe it a certain way. I hear it described as a feeling. But when I talk about self-love, which is what this channel is all about, it's not that I wake up every day with butterflies in my stomach. That's, that's not what I mean. It's that I do things regularly to demonstrate that I value myself and who I am, which means it's me putting forth certain things into constant action which means me being conscious of things that I'm doing so that I understand the next steps I need to take. So really for me, love is an action. It's a state of consciousness. It's expansive. I made a video about it, but it can also be a feeling, especially when it's towards somebody else. It's not something that we can necessarily be logical about when we love somebody else. We need to just kind of feel it and go with it and allow ourselves to just feel in that moment. So again, it's it's going to mean something different for everybody. So the anxiously attached person. And again, I can relate to both. I can be very avoidant. I can be very needy and clingy. It just depends on the situation. So I'm going to talk about the needy, clingy, anxious person right now. Because again, like I said in my other videos, at the core of both attachments, avoidant, clingy, it doesn't matter. It's Really, we're not valuing ourselves. We don't love who we are. So we're trying to get that acceptance from somebody else. Again, you can agree or disagree with that. So the anxious person, I get this vision of, in my head of somebody just sitting on the floor, you know, just throwing a shoe at the person that they really want to be with. Says, why don't you love me? I need you to acknowledge me. Talk to me. Tell me that you're in love with me now. And you know, make me feel good. And why don't you want me? I just imagine this person screaming. And they're probably with somebody who's avoidant because then the other person just turns around and they're like, bye. And they just walk out and kind of ignore that person. I'm sure some of you can relate to that dynamic because that's usually it's a clingy person that gets with an avoidant because that's kind of how it they vibe off of each other. They trigger each other. And again, to me, life is about learning lessons. And a lot of times we are getting with somebody because we're needing to learn something more about ourselves. And what I think we're trying to learn is how, how can we get better for us? What do we deserve and how do we really get that? Because energetically, we get with our match. I talk about that all the time. Like attracts like. But that doesn't mean that a clingy person is going to be with another clingy person. Because energetically, a clingy person and an avoidant, like I just said, neither one of them like who they are at their core. Both of them have abandonment issues. Both of them fear rejection and abandonment. We all do to some degree. But some of us fear it even more depending on what we've been through. The trauma, the abuse, I talk about that, the neglect. So energetically, they are a match. It's not that you have to be exactly the same as the person. It's that you're both not valuing each other. And technically, you're both avoiding being vulnerable and you're both avoiding yourselves. So again, energetically, we're a match. <laughs> but the needy, clingy person is going to be the one that's more outward with it. Why aren't you texting me back? Why aren't you talking to me? How come you don't call me 20 million times a day? And why don't you tell me that you love me? And I need you to pay more attention to me. So get that image in your head, right? That's not love. That's not me loving somebody. That's me trying to get somebody to prove to me that they love me. And why do I need somebody to prove their love to me if I already love myself? 
I don't. I need a partner. I don't need somebody to prove anything. What I need somebody to do is just deeply connect with me. And so now let me go to the avoidant real quick. Because I think of an avoidant person as the person that retreats, they withdraw. They aren't the one that's like chasing after the other person, whereas the clingy person is chasing, constantly chasing, chasing, trying to get, 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 get. I need you. I need you. I need you. Do this. Do this. Be like this. Be like this. And the avoidant is just like, goodbye. And but they're not saying that because they don't know how to that. They're not saying that because they don't want love themselves. The avoidant doesn't love who they are either. And again, that sounds harsh, but it's, you know, let's be honest here. That's what we're talking about right now. But the avoidant demonstrates that by usually constantly being in a relationship or being with somebody, which I find it's so ironic that somebody who doesn't like to be physically close with people is always in a relationship and usually living with somebody or married, same thing, tomato, tomato. But they always want somebody around. And what I noticed with the avoidant is, let's say that they are married and they have the, metaphorically speaking, they have the big fancy house with a white picket fence, 2.5 kids, a cat and a dog, right? And you think, oh, wow, they have it all and they have the perfect life. But then that person's going to, okay, now I'm going to go work for 15, 16 hours a day because I don't really want to be around my family that much because closeness scares me, which is what that is, which is avoidant. We're avoiding ourselves. When we're avoiding other people, we're not really avoiding other people. We are avoiding our own truth, our own emotions. I, I hope you guys understand that. When we are avoiding other people... We're avoiding ourselves. When we avoid love, we're avoiding us. The fear deep down really is, am I good enough? Am I lovable? Are other people actually going to believe that about me and see that? Are other people going to accept me? That's at the core of all of these attachment styles, all of these scenarios. We want somebody to accept us for who we truly are. And when we don't think that that's going to happen because it's hard for us to trust people because of thing, because of the things that have happened to us in the past, we're going to have the wall up. We're not going to believe it. So what does that mean? It means that we're not going to be able to receive it. So if we can't receive love, again, how can we give that love? And we can't receive it until we really receive it within ourselves first which is, again, why this channel, you know, we're talking about self-love. That's what we're doing. Because if we cannot value ourselves, if we don't, if I don't believe that I'm lovable, there's nothing that you're going to be able to say to convince me that I'm awesome and amazing and great. I'm going to want you to keep trying to show me that I'm amazing and I'm great, but it's always going to fail because I don't believe that about myself. So I'm going to make you do all these things and jump through all these hoops and it has to be like this and no, don't leave. And I need you to text me this many times a day, or I need certain things now and do it a certain way so that I can feel like I matter. So really, that's our issue. It's going back to us not believing it. And so we're trying to get somebody else to fill our void. So that's the clingy person. But again, now I imagine the avoidant who's probably constantly in a relationship with somebody. And the reason why I personally believe that. Because again, I can relate to both uh, being avoided and being needy is because even if we're not around the person all the time, it's it makes us feel safe or there's some sense of security or comfort in knowing that somebody's constantly there. I can pick up the phone anytime and call this person that's my partner and I can text them and they're going to text me back. And I know that I know they're always going to be there. That's my home base. That's what I like to call it. Because usually, you know, you're probably living with a person or you're, or you're going towards that, probably. And so they're always there in some way. So that makes the avoidant feel safe because they don't feel lovable. But maybe if somebody's constantly around and I can always reach out to them and I know that they always have to answer me and respond, it makes them feel lovable. So now I feel like I'm important. Now I feel like I matter. 
Because I imagine the avoidant, you know, having again, the house with the family and, you know, you think they have this perfect life and they have all the love in the world, but then they're wanting to work all the time or do whatever they can to stay busy, to stay disconnected from that. Because really they don't know how to love. They don't know how to receive it. So they technically are running away from it at the same time as wanting it so desperately. <laughs> but we don't see that in avoidance. We think the complete opposite. And that that's not true. Usually avoidance are the ones that are so deep and they want that connection so, so much. But it scares the hell out of them. Like clingy person, it doesn't scare them. It scares them, but not as much because... You know, we're constantly trying to go towards it. We're constantly striving to get it. And so it looks, again, it looks different. But at the core, neither person is feeling good about who they are. And they're trying to get the other person to make them feel good enough in life, to make them feel lovable, to make them believe that they mean something and that they have some sense of purpose. But so the avoidant, I imagine them kind of looking away, looking down, putting their hands in their pocket, just turning their back to everybody that's trying to love them. That's the image I always get of an avoidant. But like I said, with the clingy person, I imagine them on the floor throwing shoes like, why can't you just pay attention to me? (laughs) So these are the images that I was getting today for some reason. And I, I don't know, you guys agree, disagree, tell me what you think. But it's, we can't, receive the type of love and deep connection from others until we can fully give that to ourselves. Clingy, avoidant, whatever you relate to the most. It doesn't even matter because ultimately, like I said at the core, both people fear rejection and abandonment so much that they'll create this entire scenario to make themselves feel as safe as they can. So again, the avoidant is going to get with the clingy person because they know I can walk out, I can work for 20 hours a day, and this person is going to be right there when I get home. The person will answer my text as soon as I text them. The person will pick up the phone the minute I call. And they love that. It makes us feel so good, so secure. There's a big sense of security in that. Why? Because it's, again, it's making me feel like I mean something to somebody but it's not a deep connection. And so then the clingy person is going to give and give and do whatever they can to try to mean something to that person because they don't really believe that they mean anything unless they mean something to that person. So do you guys see the difference? In both cases, we want to feel meaningful. And what does that really mean? We want to feel lovable. We want to feel important. We want to feel good enough. We want to feel like we matter, like we're here for a reason, like we have some sense of purpose. Because otherwise, if nobody gives a damn about me, why am I even here? Who cares about me? Then what? why am I even here? Why do I even care? I mean, really, that's what we can believe deep down. And it gets really sad because, again, that stems from childhood. That stems from us not having that strong foundation with the people that were supposed to love us the most. So what do we do? We become adults that are trying to get that foundation with somebody. Somebody love me. Somebody help me feel some strong sense of a connection. Somebody help me get a strong foundation. But that's nobody's job. That's our job. Again, that's what we're learning on this channel. So again, I hope that makes sense to you. It's okay that we do that. I've been both. And again, I'll share my story with being clingy and needy, I guess, as far as being obsessed with guys. We weren't necessarily in a relationship even, but I was obsessed to the point where it was like, I was thinking about them constantly. If I didn't think about them a certain amount of times a day, then my anxiety would just start going up. I would start panicking. I mean, I would get so anxious because I had to think about them. What are they thinking? Are they thinking about me? Are they thinking about me? Should I text them? Should I text them? Do they want me to? How come they don't like me? Well, what's wrong with me that they don't want to be with me? How come they don't want to text me? How come they're not texting me? Constantly, every single day, it would be like that. And it was so suffocating. But it was like, if I didn't think about it, I didn't even know how to exist. And I made another video where I went more into detail about that because we don't think 
that we're using other people to get a sense of self because everybody thinks, oh, I love who I am. I have a sense of self. I'm not that desperate, needy person, even though we are and we just we don't want to admit it. These things are very hard to admit. Even for me, it's hard for me to come on here and say, yeah, I've been desperate and needy and clingy. I don't want to say that. It makes me feel weird. It makes me think that people are looking at me like, oh, man, what the hell is wrong with her? But again, that's my issue, isn't it? Because probably because it's making me feel defective or what's I don't matter or there's something wrong with me. Am I wrong? Does that mean that I'm gross? I'm disgusting? What? That's that's triggering for me, especially because of the sexual abuse. Like I always feel like I'm disgusting on some level, not as much now, but that's been a big trigger for me. So I don't want to admit things because I don't want people to confirm that. I don't want you to be thinking that. So I do everything I can to present myself all super awesome and amazing so that everybody thinks that I got my shit together and I'm perfect. But none of us are perfect, are we? So a big part of this process is going back and admitting, oh, man, do I have a bunch of shit? (laughs) Man, I do a lot of these things. It's really hard to admit it. For me to say that I've always been obsessed with somebody, I don't like that. But it's true. Gave me my sense of self. Because what do, I, what do I always say? What is our sense of self? It's really us believing that we're lovable. That's how I see it. Me. Who am I? I'm not somebody that works at this job and lives in this house and drives this car. And that's, those are extensions of me. But that's not me. That's not what makes me lovable. What makes me lovable is that I exist. I'm a person. This is who I am and I matter. But if we don't believe that at our core, because we never got to have that strong foundation, believing that we were lovable, because again, the trauma, the abuse, the neglect, the different things that we've been through, we're human. We're born into ego also. And so we're never perfect. So we're always kind of struggling on some level, struggling with the idea of being abandoned or rejected or needing to feel again, like we have a purpose. That's human nature in general. But you add abuse and trauma onto that, it's going to make us cling on to needing to feel lovable and needing people to validate our existence more and more. But we don't see it like that. I don't need anybody to validate me. That's stupid. And I'm going to post a meme that says that. I see those memes and I'm just like, shut up. (laughs) Especially when I see the person that posts that. You don't think you need people to validate you? But yet all you're ever doing is seeking approval from others in your own codependent ways. See, we can't, you got to really look at your stuff. This is a process that requires a lot of honesty. So again, for those of you that are doing it, I'm very proud of you because it's hard. The hardest thing is to look in that mirror and say, yes, this is what I do. And I'm doing all of these things. Why? Shit, I guess I don't love myself as much as I thought I did. It's really hard to admit that. It's really, really, really hard to break in that moment and really surrender to that idea. But we can only rebuild ourselves and become the best versions possible when we break and we crumble that shitty foundation. And we realize I've done all these things because I was trying to feel good enough, really. I was trying to get other people to fill my void. I was trying to get other people to make me feel like I'm worthy. I was trying to get other people to help me see that I am lovable. And because the truth is, I never believed it. Because the truth is, I put the wall up so high that I never let anybody in. So when I was chasing after these guys and just obsessing constantly over them, it's because I couldn't admit that I didn't feel like I mattered. I didn't believe I was lovable. Because the minute I admit that, what does that mean? That means I fall down completely. That means I crumble. That means I crash. That means that I'm defeated. That's what it feels like. And it will feel like that at first. It means that it's like nothing I ever did was real. Am I real? It's just, it's a really hard, hard thing to do. That's the hardest part of this process is admitting it surrendering to it and letting yourself completely crash and fall and saying that was the old foundation. That was the old me. I was, I was desperate and I was trying to get people to 
make me feel like I'm lovable. I was trying to get other people to see me as wonderful because I constantly needed somebody else's approval. I constantly needed somebody else to help me feel good enough. I used to buy people things all the time also. And we can be generous and there's nothing wrong with that. But I know deep down there was a big part of me because I was doing it constantly that was doing it because I wanted people to like me. Or I was the people pleaser. I was the fixer. I was the one. I was the rescuer. I was always there. Here I am here to help. Am I wonderful now? Do you think that I'm amazing now? Again, it's hard to see these things. Or I completely avoid people. I can disconnect real quick if I want to. And that scares me. I don't like that because I don't want to be able to just walk away from somebody and not give a damn and pretend like I never knew them. I don't like that. That scares me when people do that to me. (laughs) But I I can. I can do that. Not so much now because I, I have to be real conscious of what I'm doing. But it's easy for me to detach because I never understood how to attach. I never had got to form healthy attachments in childhood. I was always having to detach from different situations and I was having to detach from moments when things were happening to me. I had to disconnect. So it's easy for me to do it. So again, I can be both. I can avoid the shit out of my feelings and everybody. I can retreat, withdraw, buy. No, I can cling on for dear life. Give me my sense of self. But the avoidant is like, I'm going to walk away and I'm not going to talk to you. And in fact, I'm going to ignore you sometimes, but I know you're going to be there. But that makes me feel good because boom, that just made me feel like I mattered. Boom. Thanks for making me feel lovable. So again, both people doing the same exact thing at the core. And at the core, we're deeply afraid that people are going to walk away from us. So again, we keep the wall up. You don't think of the clingy person as, as hey, even having a wall up because they're you think of that person as just chasing and desperate and needy and oh, I'm just going to chase and continue to go after you because I have no self-worth and you know, I have no self-esteem and so I'm just going to let you do whatever you want to me and it doesn't matter and but there's a wall there. And the wall is Wow, I don't believe that I'm lovable. I I don't even know how to be vulnerable. I know how to be desperate. I know how to chase. I know how to try to tell you to tell me that I that you love me, but I don't actually love myself, do I? So guess what? Boom, there's the wall. But again, we don't see it that way. The avoidant, we see that wall. I mean, that wall is obvious. <laughs> it's like the wall is just, it's there. They're on the other side of it, right? So in order for us to really be close with other people, and right now I'm talking about romantic relationships in particular, even though it's hard for us probably to be close to everybody to some degree, but I'm going to talk about romantic relationships because that's where people struggle, I think, the most. We get with people that are not good for us, but we're getting with people that are ener- that are our energetic match, Because the more you start to value yourself, the more you're just not going to want to put up with certain things. You're going to want somebody that really loves and values themselves because you're going to start seeing through the neediness. For example, if somebody asked me out on a date and I I felt that desperation energetically, we can we can feel that. Or if I could feel the big wall up where they're super guarded and they're, you know, trying too hard or they're just something that's off. Because I can tell that they're trying to actually get me to want them and like them instead of them just wanting to connect with me as a person. There's a difference when we like ourselves and we're secure with who we are and we start building that strong foundation and we're really loving who we are and believing that. We're not trying to prove anything to anybody. And again, I don't want any of you out there saying, I don't try to prove anything. I'm just, I am who I am. And if they don't like me, fuck them. And I do what I do. And I don't have a problem with that. And again, when you're ready to be honest, that's what this channel is helping us with. (laughs) Because you can't pretend like you're not doing things that you really, you are doing these things probably. And you don't realize it. We don't want to see that that's what we're doing. I'm not desperate. Okay, well. Okay, that you're the only one that could admit that. It's hard to admit it. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of courage. It really does. 
but we start to see it when we start to really look at our patterns. And then you have to ask yourself, are you happy? Do you enjoy your life? Do you feel fulfilled? You're the only one that can answer any of those questions. But so again, let's say we're on a date and we feel that desperation. I can feel this person trying so hard to get me to see them a certain way. That's going to turn me off automatically right right away. I'm just going to be like, no, I'm good. I can see it. What I see is that somebody is not doing their inner work. And what I see is somebody who's really not valuing who they are. And the more they try to pump themselves up, the more I know they don't like who they are. Have you guys met that person where all they just sit there and talk about themselves the whole time? They don't ask you any questions. They don't want to know you. They just sit there and keep telling you stuff and they tell you how much they paid for different things or all these just different things that they've done to try to make themselves look super cool. And I'm not saying that we can't share things, that there's a balance. I'm talking about the person that's just, they're arrogant a little bit and you sense that. That's the person to me that's really not feeling good about themselves. So they're really trying extra hard to make, you see them as something positive because they don't see themselves that way. What is that called? Overcompensation to defense mechanisms. What we do when we don't feel good about ourselves. It's okay for us not to feel good about ourselves and admit that. I would rather have somebody admit that to me and say, but I'm working on it versus pretending like there's something that they're not. I don't like that. That's the mask that we wear, but we all wear it at some point. All of us do. Because we want to be strong. We want to look strong. We want to pretend like we're in high vibes. We want to pretend like we have our shit together. We do. Look, I'm shining bright, even though I'm making all of these really unhealthy decisions that are actually really not good for me at all. And I'm in all these toxic situations and it's not good for me at all. But I like who I am. It's like it's a contradiction. So we're taking off the mask. Let's take it off. Take it off. Admit things you don't want to admit. I do. And that's why I'm admitting them to you. Not so that you can be like, oh, my God, I can't believe she did that. Oh, my gosh, I cannot believe that, you know, you've tried these things or that you used to blah, blah, blah. And as if you haven't done anything like that. So we can't judge other people either. This is where the compassion comes in. And somebody's telling you something and they're being honest about something that they've done and we judge them, guess what's going to happen? We're going to shut down. This is why we don't have honest communication. So if you want honest communication, don't shut somebody down when they're trying to be honest with you. And don't tell them, oh, I can't believe you did that. Okay, well, I did. Now you just made me feel stupid. Don't. Share something about what you've done. Or say, you know what? I can see that. Or, oh, that's cool. Like, oh, I've done something similar. Or, oh, all right. Don't make somebody feel stupid. That actually, that's... That's your issue when you do that, really. And I think it's because when somebody's being honest and you can't handle that because maybe you don't want to admit certain things about yourself. So what do we do? We project our shit onto them or we try to make other people feel stupid because we hope they don't start poking around our life and we hope that they don't start seeing some of the things that we do. So think about that. That's something we do all the time and we don't even realize it. Let's keep the focus on you and all the bullshit you do so that you don't see any of my shit. Let's get real about our shit and stop doing that. If you've done it, it's fine. We've all done it. I've done it. We've all done all of these things at some point, all of them. We have. <laughs> but the thing is, we can always improve. We can do better. We can really start to value ourselves, which is, again, that's what we're doing. That's what we're working on right now. And you don't have to be perfect before you can get into a relationship with somebody. So let me, let me clarify that a little bit. Let's say that I've been in therapy for two or three years and somebody's like, oh man, I don't think I can be with you because I've only been in therapy for like two or three weeks or a month, whatever. I'm not at your level. I know we talk about levels on here and I talk about different parts of our journeys, but the truth is the journey is just a state of progression. It's a state of consistently loving who we are, valuing ourselves. That doesn't mean that every day I'm going to, that I'm not going to fuck up. I might fuck up and do something that proves that I don't really like myself. Maybe I just threw a tantrum and got a little attitude and I shut down. 
that's not me valuing myself. That's me putting up my wall, retreating, withdrawing, avoiding. But I'm still human. It's going to happen sometimes. But what's different is in those moments, am I going to be conscious of it? And am I going to stop myself from doing that further? Okay, you just retreated. You're doing your thing where you're freaking out right now. And it's fine because you're human. I get it. You, somebody might have triggered you, whatever it is. Let's figure out what the trigger is. Let's get through it. Let's tear down that wall. Let's be vulnerable within ourselves. Let's talk ourselves through it so that we can continue to move forward. Continue this love expansion, consciousness, consciousness of loving who we are and continuing to do what's best for us. What's best for your higher self? What do you need for you? So it's never about being perfect. It's always, to me, it's about a state of willingness. Once you surrender to this process, I don't care if you went to therapy once, but you want to go back because you want to continue to learn about yourself and you want to continue to grow and you want to continue to really heal the wounds and release this toxic energy. You want to do better and better. You don't necessarily know how to do that yet. We don't know how to do it until we continue to learn. And even as we're learning, we continue to fall. And as we continue to fall, we continue to feel defeated. As we continue to feel defeated, we continue to then do even more things that are toxic sometimes because we felt defeated. That's normal. We're human. But the whole point is now you always have a choice. Are you going to continue to try to improve and love who you are and value yourself? Or are you going to shut down, withdraw, and turn the other way and not try to do anything? about your situation, about your life. That's the difference. So I wouldn't even look at it as, you know, oh, I don't want to ask this person out, for example. This is just an example. I don't want to ask this person out because I think that I'm not on their level. I wouldn't even look at it like that. I would look at it as they've surrendered to their process of self-love. And you know what? I've surrendered to my process of self-love, which means that I'm ready to really try to receive somebody else's love. That's a big part of this too, whether you're, you identify with an avoidant personality attachment style or the needy, clingy, anxious attachment personality style. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you identify with, we can always improve where we're at and who we are. And we can always want to love who we are. But a big part of that, whichever one you identify with, is going to be about your willingness to receive someone else's love. Because again, we're thinking, well, the needy, clingy person wants to receive that person's love so desperately. That's why they're constantly trying to get them to see them as wonderful. They're not receiving anything. They're receiving false validation. They're receiving false connection. What they're trying to receive is somebody to make them feel good enough about themselves. That's not their job. That's not our job to do that for anybody. So you're not really receiving love. Receiving true unconditional love is scary. The avoidant, they're not really trying to receive that love either. They're trying to receive this person making them feel like they're worthy, like they matter by always being there. But I don't really have to be around you. I can go retreat and you're still going to be there. That's, That's how I feel like I'm lovable with you, but I'm not really receiving your love, am I? I'm receiving a false connection. I'm receiving this pretend idea of it because I still don't see it in myself. So again, I hope that makes sense to you guys. We cannot receive love if we do not receive it from ourselves, which is why I say start the process of self-love on your own. It's about you loving who you are and demonstrating that in your everyday life. You will get stronger and stronger. You'll get better and better at it. You are going to constantly make mistakes. You're constantly going to fall down. But as long as you're willing to get back up, that's a big part of you actually valuing yourself. So I hope you guys understand that. So it's not about this person's on this level, this person's on this level, even though I'll use that as a metaphor sometimes I will. But the truth is when it comes to unconditional love, we all deserve it. But we have to give it to ourselves first and foremost, because if we don't, we cannot properly receive that from somebody. What we think we're receiving, that unconditional love, what we think is unconditional love, again, is actually 
us receiving validation and approval from other people. So notice the difference. It's going to feel similar. You're going to get the goosebumps, the butterflies. I'm like, but I feel tingly all over when this person calls me and texts me. Okay, that's cute. But that's not a deep connection. That's you needing to feel something. And trust me, I get that because I have done everything I can to feel alive in some sense. Chasing after those guys, seeking that approval, it made me feel alive. It made me feel like I mattered. It just, it may not make sense to you, but it's, those are things that we do because I didn't want to feel dead inside the emptiness, the disconnect. So a lot of times we have people around us constantly because we don't want to feel disconnected, dead and empty. But that's a fake connection when we're not feeling it within ourselves. We're constantly needing that from other people. It's never really, it's never real. It's never us. That's not love. That to me is the desperation. And I don't mean that in a harsh way because I said I've been desperate. I get it. And because I was scared to receive love also. Because we don't put the wall up for other people. The wall is really up for us. It's for our benefit. It's to keep people out. Because it's healthy to have boundaries. You want to keep bullshit out of your life. That's a boundary. That's not a wall. A wall keeps actual love out of your life. The wall keeps vulnerability away from you. So again, understand the difference. It's completely okay for us to detach from toxic people, from toxic situations. It's okay for us to not try to make a relationship work with somebody that's that we're not compatible with, that we don't even really want to be with, that we don't really like, that's not deeply enriching and fulfilling for us. We, not everybody's going to be a match and not everybody's going to be a, like that good partner for us. Don't try to make it work with somebody that, that it's not going to work with because that doesn't prove anything. It's, we need to be with people that we really connect with for reals, on a real level, that we're really willing to put the wall down with and that we're really willing to receive that love from. And those are the people that we need to try to make it work with. But when you have that, I don't think you need to try to make it work. I think it just works because you're both in a good place within yourselves. But again, it's not about two people being perfect. It really is about the willingness to continue this process, to really surrender to self-love, to really surrendering and being willing to choose you every time. That doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up. You will. I will. We all will. (laughs) But there's messing up like something small. You know, I got triggered and I got upset, but then I realized I was getting angry. And instead of cussing somebody out, I kind of pulled myself back and I understood where the anger was coming from. That's healthy, but I still got angry. Right. So, you know, we're going to, make mistakes or we're going to do things that are not always super great and super progressive, but it's when we can catch ourselves, but then we don't want to do things that are completely detrimental. You know, it's like if I'm with somebody and we're in love and I'm starting to not feel good about myself or whatever. And then I go and I don't know, like, let's say I go and cheat on the person that's not quite the same. That's a little more serious. That's not something that I can just be like, oh, whoops, I got upset. And then I realized why and I talked myself through it. Whoops, I cheated. And then I got myself through it. No, that's a little more serious. That's a little more detrimental. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm just saying the more willing you are to value yourself and to love who you are, the less you're going to want to do detrimental things in your life. I I hope you understand the difference. Like getting angry for a few minutes isn't going to cause serious problems in your life. Just getting upset for a little bit. Getting upset, punching somebody out, getting arrested, and constantly fighting, that's going to cause problems in your life. So that's what I mean. It's like they're when you start the process and you really want to self-love, you're not going to go out and punch somebody out. You're going to get upset. You're not going to punch somebody out. So again, I hope you understand the difference. 
those are the, that would be, those are the toxic behaviors versus just us being human and we're not perfect. But we have to get to that point where we're not wanting to do the toxic detrimental things because there's a difference. The dysfunctional behavior patterns, we all do it, but we can do it less and less and we can improve that more and more. So again, I I hope you guys understand the difference, but nobody's done anything that's unforgivable. I hope you guys understand that too. That's where the self-forgiveness again comes in and myself included. I just, sometimes I'm like, did I mess up too much? I did, but no, because I'm human and I'm still worthy of love and I deserve love. I deserve romantic love. I deserve to receive unconditional love from somebody because I deserve that within myself, but I cannot receive that once again until I, until I can really give that to myself. That doesn't mean that I have to be in therapy for years and years before I can receive that. that that's not what I'm saying. Are you willing to, to always take the high road in situations, I guess is kind of what I'm saying. Not that you're perfect, but that you're always willing to choose you and self-love instead of something destructive. The choice is always yours, but we all deserve love. We all deserve other people's love and our own, but we cannot give other people that true love until we can give that to ourselves. And we can't receive it from other people truly until we can receive it from ourselves. So do you understand the difference? So stop trying to do things to seek approval or to try to get somebody to make you feel like you matter or to try to get somebody to make you believe that you're lovable. That's not anybody's job. Nobody's here to fill our void. We do that. We fill our own void by healing the wounds, by getting ourselves through these situations where we're not feeling good about ourselves. We get through it in a healthy way. It's okay that we don't feel good about ourselves sometimes, but how are you going to deal with it? That's always the question. And so again, I hope all of this makes sense. But again, we really, really need to understand self-love and why that's so important and why I always tell you to go back and heal the inner child wounds and to go back and understand your dysfunctional behavior patterns because until we become aware of these things, we cannot change them. And so when we start changing them, when we start truly changing within ourselves. So again, we need to become conscious of all these things. And, you know, again, I'm really proud of you guys because this is hard. All of these things are hard. It's hard to admit things. I don't like to think of a lot of the things that I've done, but I've done it. But I'm human and I'm still lovable. And again, I'm still worthy of love. So I don't want to shut down and think that, oh, no, no, I've screwed up too much in life. So no, I'm just not going to allow anything positive for myself. No. And it's never too late to change. No, I'm, I'm doing what I can to raise my vibrations every day. And I'm doing what I can to value myself every single day. And so again, I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Sorry. Um, But we really need to go for it. And we really need to take a look in the mirror and say to ourselves, I deserve this. I do. You may not believe it yet because, again, you have to heal the wounds to really start believing it. But when you do start believing it and you're willing to take the next step and you're willing to just kind of continue on this path, Love will continue to expand for you in every area of your life, but within yourself again first. So let's keep going. And again, I'm very, very proud of you guys. <laughs>